Hey, Dr. Clark here as always, and in this video we're going to start learning about divergence and curl. Let's get started. So um, divergence and curl are two properties that a vector field have, and we're going to start with divergence and then in the next video we'll take a look at curl. So um, divergence is this notion of whether in a say if take a fluid for example and the vector field is giving you the velocity of that fluid are is the fluid sort of coming together at a point or is the fluid expanding at a point so do you have a source or a sink and negative divergence would be the notion of a sink positive divergence would be the notion of a source and if neither of these things are happening if the fluid is just sort of moving downstream or something then maybe there's no divergence so here's a vector field. Um, see here, there see, seems like a source is happening. There's all kinds of sort of fluid coming away from that point. So this would be positive divergence. Here you might say there's a point of negative divergence because the vector field is coming in and then sort of disappearing. Uh, positive divergence again. Uh, and then maybe sort of negative divergence as the fluid sort of dies out. So it's almost like it's uh, you know, flu is being sucked away or something and created here. All right. Um, mathematically, the divergence is just the gradient dotted with the vector field. So this grad operator, uh, which just says take partial x, partial y, partial z. Uh, so you take the x partial derivative of the p part of the vector field, the y derivative of the q, and the z derivative of the r. So, and then add those together, right? So that's the divergence of a vector field. It is a number or a function, if you want to think of it that way, right? You start with a vector field, but it spits out a number. It's just telling you, is fluid being created or destroyed or neither? Um, when you get zero, then the vector field we say is source free. And then, um, yeah, this is just kind of what I've been saying. And the way to do it is pretty straightforward. So here's just a nice little example. Um, compute the divergence of this vector field. So here's a vector field x squared y, x squared z, e to the x, z. Uh, you're going to take the x, y, z partial derivatives, dot them with the three components of the vector field. So we take the x derivative of the p component, the y derivative of the y component, and the z derivative of the z component. And then the x derivative is 2xy, the y derivative of this is 0, and the z derivative of e to the xz is xe to the xz, and then add those three together. That's the divergence of that vector field. Uh, here's another example. Let phi equal this function. That's a potential function for a vector field f. And then they say, what is the divergence of that vector field? So if the vector field f comes from a potential function, phi here, then the way we would get f is to take the gradient of that vector of that potential function. So the vector field f must be the gradient of this potential function. Uh, and so if we take the derivative, we take the x derivative of cosine, we get negative sine x e to the 2y. We take the y derivative, we get uh, 2 e to the 2y times cosine, so that's that. So here's the potential function. The vector field f is the gradient of that potential function. And then it says, well, what now is the divergence of that vector field? Well, then we would take the x derivative of this and the y derivative of that and add them together. And the x derivative of this is negative cosine e to the 2y. The y derivative of this is 2 e to the 2y times 2 cosine, so 4 cosine plus e to the 2y. We add those together. All right, so you can um, see another example there. And, um, and then in this last example, they just want us to say, hey, when does this uh, vector field have positive divergence? When does it have negative divergence? So anytime the vector field is sort of accelerating, see here like small, medium, large, that seems like positive divergence happening, like the, the field is accelerating, so it's diverging away. Anytime the field is sort of decelerating here, it's getting big, smaller, 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 that would be negative divergence. So it's shrinking down. And then over here, maybe the divergence is zero. It seems to be kind of rotating. Um, and divergence doesn't really care about rotation. It cares when it's accelerating or decelerating. 
Um, so maybe down here you wouldn't really have much divergence. Here you've got a lot. Here it kind of is rotating again, so there's probably not much divergence there. Um, but here positive, here negative. And that's, um, that's kind of the main idea with divergence. You've got your vector field. Is it sort of being accelerated or contracting? Um, and, it's, and it's a scalar quantity that measures the rate at which that is uh, that vector field is sort of being created or destroyed or whatever, accelerating or decelerating, if you want to think of it that way. So uh, in the next video, we'll take a look at curl, which uh, measures sort of the rotational qualities of a vector field. So we'll see you then.